ever record something and just think, right. man, I wish I could cut out that awkward cough. Or like when you're trying to layer your pet parrot's, you know, vocal stylings over a smooth jazz track. This is why we have Audacity. Yeah. And thankfully, our listeners send in the manual for Audacity. The ultimate guide. The ultimate guide. So we're diving into the Audacity manual. It's free. It is free, which is wonderful. Let's unlock the secrets, I guess, of this uh, powerful audio editing software. I think that free part is what gets a lot of people initially interested. Right. But then what's so fascinating is how many people stick around yeah. because it is so powerful. Yes. And it's become this favorite tool, not just for hobbyists, but for independent creators. Absolutely. Yeah. And it all starts with understanding uh, this thing called digital audio. And I will say the manual jumps right into sound waves, microphones, yeah. which is all well and good. Of course. Yeah. But, you know, I'm thinking... Get to the part where I can make my dog sound like Barry White. Exactly. That's all I want. I hear you. And honestly, grasping the basics of digital audio unlocks so much of what makes Audacity really tick. Okay. So like, take sample rate, for example. Okay. The manual mentions it's how frequently Audacity measures a sound wave. Sure, okay. But what does that mean for us in the real world, you know? That's the part where I'm always like, what does that mean for me? Yeah. Hit me with the, why should I care? Okay, yeah. Think of it like this. Imagine you're streaming a movie. Okay. A higher sample rate is going to be like streaming it in HD. Okay. It's that crystal clear picture where you're catching every single detail. Lower sample rate. Think old blurry YouTube videos. You know they get the job done. Right. But you're losing some of the nuances. So higher sample rate, better audio quality. Yes. But probably bigger file size. You got it. That's why choosing the right sample rate for your project is key. Okay. Like music, yeah. you want that high fidelity experience, so 44.1 kilohertz, like what CDs use. Okay. That's going to be your friend. But then for a podcast, especially if you're conscious of your listener's data and download sizes, right. you can often get away with a lower rate without sacrificing too much clarity. Okay, that makes, that makes a lot more sense. And then there's the whole file type, like yeah. WAV versus MP3, the manual... Uh, I don't know. They kind of lost me Yeah. in the weeds on that one. Sure. Help me out. So it's about finding that balance between quality and the size. Okay. Imagine this. A giant delicious cake. Okay. That's your WAV file. Okay. It's uncompressed, full of all the data, a pure representation of your audio. Right. But sometimes you need to, you know, package a slice of that cake to share. Okay. That's where your MP3 comes in. Yeah. It uses some, uh, you know, clever compression to kind of shrink down that file size. Okay. And it sacrifices a tiny bit of the original data to do it. Gotcha. So I should be editing in WAV, that pristine cake, exactly, and then slicing it into MP3s for sharing. You got it. You want to maintain that highest quality throughout your editing process. Okay. And then once you're happy with your final product, that's when you can optimize it for sharing. That's a great way to, uh, to think about it. Yeah. And speaking of editing, the manual then jumps into, uh, you know, cutting, deleting, moving audio around. It's like digital surgery. It is. For your sound. Yes. Um, it mentions something called non-destructive editing. Yes. Which, as someone who's prone to accidentally deleting important files, sounds like a lifesaver. Oh, it absolutely is. Tell me more. Okay. So, imagine this. You're working on an audio track, experimenting with all these different cuts and edits. Right. And then, oh, disaster. You realize you made a horrible mistake. Been there. Deleted the wrong thing. Panic. Well, with Audacity's non-destructive editing, you can breathe easy. Okay. Because no matter how much you chop and change or rearrange that original audio file, it's left untouched. Okay. It's like having a safety net, letting you experiment freely without that fear of ruining your masterpiece. That's a game changer, especially for beginners. Oh, for sure. No more sleepless nights worrying about accidentally deleting something. Exactly. So with these basic editing tools, like what can you actually do to manipulate the sound? So even with just the basics, you can achieve some pretty impressive results. Okay. Imagine like wanting to add a dramatic pause for emphasis. Okay. Or maybe you flubbed a word and need to seamlessly remove it. Right. Those are just the starting point. Audacity really lets you treat your audio like um, this flexible, moldable medium. Okay. I'm starting to see the possibilities here. Um, the manual also mentions splitting and joining tracks. Yes. And that's where I think my inner DJ starts to get really excited. Yeah. Splitting, joining, that's where the real magic happens. Like imagine you could take a drum loop from one song and then 
like seamlessly blended into your own track. That's the beauty of it. And yeah. Audacity makes it surprisingly intuitive. Okay. But before we get too deep into, you know, multi-track masterpieces, right. let's talk about one of the most versatile tools in Audacity's arsenal. Okay. The envelope tool. The envelope tool. Okay. I'll be honest. The name itself sounded a little intimidating Yeah. at first glance. It's not as complicated as it sounds. Okay. Think of it less like a tool and more like a superpower. Okay. It basically gives you this fine-tuned control over the volume of your tracks. Okay, volume control. And listen, give me an example. When would I use this superpower? Okay, so let's say you're recording a voiceover. Right. And you want to emphasize certain words or phrases for right. impact. Right. Now, instead of just talking louder, which can sound jarring. Right. The envelope tool lets you create these really subtle and smooth volume increases. Okay. Just for those key moments. It's right. like adding an audio highlighter to your words. Oh, okay. Right. So instead of like a blunt instrument, it's like having that fine-tipped brush. Exactly. Okay. The manual uses a rather amusing example to demonstrate this. Okay. Okay. It involves cat meows and blues guitar. Wait, cat meows? Okay, now I have to know more. How? What? It's more about the concept than the actual sounds. Okay. But it's a good illustration of how you can control the dynamics of a track. Okay. So imagine we have this guitar riff playing. Okay. And then you want to introduce a cat's meow. Right. Subtly in the background. Okay. The envelope tool would let you gradually fade in that meow. Right. Yeah. Blend it with the guitar at a specific volume right. and then fade it out again, Okay, creating this really quirky layered effect. So it's not just about fading in and out, you know, at the beginning, at the end of a track, but having this granular control throughout the entire thing. Exactly. You can create these smooth transitions between yeah. different audio segments, Right. emphasize specific sounds within a track, okay. and even craft those really slow, dramatic fades that build tension or create a sense of space. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm starting to get why this envelope tool is such a big deal, but how do you actually use it in Audacity? It's actually simpler than it looks. Once you've selected the envelope tool, okay. you'll notice a blue line that appears around your audio tracks. Think of this line as a representation of your audio's volume over time. To adjust the volume at a specific point, okay. you just click on that blue line. This creates what Audacity calls a control point. Control point. So those are like markers that dictate the volume at that particular moment. You got it. And then you can drag those control points up or down to increase or decrease the volume at those specific spots. Okay. And the best part is Audacity automatically creates this nice smooth curve between those points. Okay. So you get a really natural sounding fade or volume change, no more abrupt jumps or cuts. And because it's digital audio, we have the freedom to just keep playing around with those points yes. until we get it right. Exactly. Don't be afraid to experiment. Okay. Move those control points around, listen to how the volume changes affect your audio, and find what sounds best for you. And and remember, you can always undo any changes you make. Right. So feel free to get as creative as you want. That's great. This is making me realize that good audio editing, it's not just about having like the fancy tools, mm. but it's knowing how to use them creatively. You're so right. And I think that's what separates, you know, the amateurs for from the true audio artists. I'm starting to feel like an artist already. But let's be real. Sometimes less is more, right? Right. Not every track needs a cat solo. Yeah. And the manual seems to emphasize that even with all these tools, Nailing those basics right. is key. It's like learning to walk before you can run. Right. Or, you know, unleash a symphony of meows upon the world. Right. And the manual emphasizes that a lot, actually. Uh, they say, even without going too crazy with all the effects, mastering those fundamentals in audacity right. can dramatically improve your audio quality. Okay. So what are we talking? Like clean cuts, making sure there aren't any awkward silences, that sort of thing. Exactly. Think of it like this. You've recorded this great podcast episode, right. but there are a few ums and ahs. Maybe there was a chair squeak that you don't necessarily want the whole world to hear. Right. Those little imperfections, they can be distracting to listeners. Right. But with Audacity's basic editing tools, you can clean all that up and create a much more polished listening experience. It's all about attention to detail. It's those subtle tweaks that make a big difference. Exactly. And what's really cool is that Audacity empowers anyone to do that. Right. You don't need some fancy studio setup to get that professional sound. See, this is why I love these deep dives. Yeah. We go from feeling intimidated by the Audacity manual right. to... 
hey, I could totally do this. You totally can. And like we said, the manual only scratches the surface. Right. There's a whole world of effects and plugins and advanced techniques to explore. Oh, yeah. But for now, I think we've given our listeners a really good foundation. For sure. To build upon. They've got the basics of digital audio. Right. They know their way around audacity's interface a little bit more hopefully yes and they've even got a handle on the mighty envelope tool that's right that's right and i think you know the biggest takeaway for me at least is just to encourage experimentation right the more you play around with audacity the yeah. more comfortable you'll become with it yeah and who knows what sonic masterpieces you'll create exactly so to our listeners out there don't be afraid to dive in make some noise right. or edit it out and most importantly have fun with it. Have fun. And as a final thought for our listeners, remember those psychoacoustic algorithms that the manual mentioned? Yes. The ones that make those compressed audio files like MP3s, you know, sound good wait, wait. despite their smaller size? Yes. It's fascinating, right? It's this intersection of science and technology where yeah. we're literally manipulating how our brains perceive sound. Well, that's such a good point. <laughs> We might need to do a whole nother deep dive on that. Right. But for now, thanks for joining us on this Audacity adventure. Until next time. Happy editing, everyone.